Hello, this is Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick, and I'm talking with Diego Lopez, who is the head of technology exploration in the global CTO unit of Telefonica. Diego, welcome. We're going to be talking about SDN and NFV for the next few minutes. SDN and NFV have burst onto the scene seemingly from out of nowhere and lots of people are saying it's the most important thing that's happened in networks in more than a generation yet there's another camp which has actually no not really it's a bit of technology and a rebranding of OSS what do you make of that argument well my my position is that the, the situation we're living right now with SBN and NFB and whatever else that comes in, in network virtualization and network abstraction is going to bring something that has been very often said about a paradigm shift. We are, we are facing a change in the, in the way in which we are going to think and to work with networks, certainly. And that, uh, that uh, things will, will change for certain. What I'm not sure if, that, if they are going to change in this exact direction we are, they are facing right now. Probably things are going to change in some other direction. You never know what the future will bring in the coming year, for example. But the truth is that things are going to change, and I, and I tend to, to use this analogy with what happened when Java appeared in the, uh, by the end of the 90s, that it was application programming dramatically changed. Not exactly as it was originally foreseen by the people running Java with the applets, if you remember, etc. but things changed so much that the uh, uh, landscape of, of the application programming was completely different. I'm sure that the landscape of network the network concept itself is going to change. Well, the obvious questions in response to that are how and why. How? How in mostly directly in, in bringing to networking and making networking close to current IT practice in the sense that uh, networks uh, will, become, will become more um, conceivable as suitable for to be abstracted and suitable to be dealt with like you deal with uh, right now with complex parts of a computer like a, a processor, memory, disks, whatever the peripheral. So networks will become fully programmable, fully con dynamically controllable and uh, fully uh, suitable for um, more, um, uh, which is the name, uh, formal analysis that now is a little bit far away. I mean, real networks are really far away from that. Why? Because in that sense, the network will become a much more powerful um, tool in the hands of, uh, in general, IT practitioners. It is to, to uh, realize, really realize this promise of the ITC, the, the, the um, information technologies and communication into, into a real single um, corpus of knowledge and practice. Okay, so the potential for SDN and NFV is obviously great, but SDN is simply a framework. How important are standards going to be, and how important will it be to avoid islands of proprietoriness, as it were? Well, essentially because if you don't have standards, you don't have freedom. You don't have freedom to change, you don't have even freedom to dare to bet for that uh, particular technology because you risk to be locked in in um, some uh, kind of uh, silo or niche that will be very difficult to get rid in the future without uh, sufficient support and uh, with, without a community that is big enough to uh, guarantee that your, the technology you choose or you chose in the past is going to have any, any kind of future. So unless there is a I not necessarily full, I mean, standards in the sense that you understand it as a full-fledged standard mandated by standard body and going through a formal process. But at least you don't have a common consensus among the community of what we are doing when we are dealing with SDN, what we are doing when we are dealing with NFV, a common understanding that can allow, on the one hand, to, to have the opportunity of bring, a, a, bring up a... a, a big communities supporting you on the, on the one hand and second be open enough to allow innovators entrepreneurs to take to participate from the beginning otherwise it's not going to happen or it's not going to be a, a safe bet for the potential users 
It's pretty evident what Telefonica potentially will get from SDN and NFV, but what about your customers? What will they get? Our customers. Our customers would, uh, should, or, well, or shall get, <laughs> um, extremely more efficient network. Uh, they, shall, they, they will be able to get uh, innovative service in much, much more short time, both in, in terms of development, the time in which uh, that will take us to, to, to develop a new service first, and second, in the in timing of deployment, the time that will get us to provide them with the service when they require it. Uh, and third, probably, probably they will get as well the possibility of interact directly interacting with certain network parameters. Though, I must confess that this is a personal opinion and this is something that is still a little bit under discussion, not only within Telefonica, but I would say among uh, all operators. Moving on then, where does IMS play into all this and how should it be viewed strategically? Yeah, well, I, I think that the uh, IMS uh, is somehow similar to SDN at, the, at a different layer. IMS is something that is software defining the uh, service layer, while with, with uh, SDN you are software defining the network layer. So they, uh, they can run in parallel and you can provide and you can take advantage of IMS without using SDN and you can take advantage of SDN without working at IMS at all. And precisely NFB can be the, the, uh, the glue between both to put, get together the service virtualization that uh, IMS provides and the network virtualization that SDN provides to provide a well, full virtualized network experience that will allow first, again, to fully realize the promise of IMS, of a decoupled service plane, and second, enable um, the operators and, and other parties to take advantage of the full IMS architecture. So I, I, think, I think this, I don't see that IMS can but benefit from the uh, um, availability of SDN plus NFV. And how soon do you think we'll see SDN and NFV playing in the optical layer? And in what role? Right now, we have made some initial experiments on SDN on top of the, uh, of the uh, optical layers. We are collaborating with a couple of uh, optical uh, equipment manufacturers, in, and we are making experiments on that. We are participating in the optical transport uh, working group inside ONF, in which people is very much looking at how you deal with the particular characterization that the optical layer requires because we're not talking about packets, we're talking about uh, wavelengths and, and physical things that are difficult to virtualize. But on the other hand, when it comes to the control plane, the control plane of the optical layer, having SDN there is extremely promising because it would allow us to provide really uh, real and complete end-to-end -end services across the optical layers as well. So things are as I see them, they are extremely promising when it comes to SDN. When it comes to NFV, well, virtualizing a wavelength is something a little bit, well, mm. interesting problem. <laughs> uh, well, probably quantum physics could have something to, tell the, to, tell, to say there. But I think, I think that when it comes to, the, again, to the, in the control player, uh, plane, in which you would allow, for example, to have a distributed control plane on top of the optical layer, that could make some sense. It would be something similar. Similar. Just uh, thinking right now out of, my, uh, out of the top of my mind is about the possibility of having something like a, an AMS that is uh, for, the, for the optical control layer. So you can... Um, divide the different functions and, and take advantage of, of different logical entities taking care of it. Diego Lopez, thank you very much indeed. You're more than welcome. Thank you to you.